Happy New Year mga tangay! Bagong taon na naman. Marami sa inyo mag-uumpisa ng inyong mga bagong projects. Pwedeng bahay or pwedeng apartment business. So for all of you who are planning to start your apartment business this 2022, this video is for you. This will be our 10 things to do on how to start your apartment business. Good morning mga tangay. Good morning friends. Welcome back to our channel and happy 2022. But if you're new here, I'm Janice and this is Pause Pray Simplify and this video is part of our apartment business playlist or apartment business tips where we share our tips and tricks, our learnings, best practices in the rental industry so that you as a landlord can grow your apartment business and up your game now. So, ang video po na ito ay dedicated sa ating tangay na who has been with us for the longest time now, Nerissa. She has been watching our videos from the beginning. And ngayon, nasabi niya, na-inspire na raw siya na magawa ng apartment. At ngayong 2022, nag-start na. Another tangay, I, I, I forgot her name, I think Risa, magsa-start na rin daw siya ng build, I think December 8, if I'm not mistaken. So, Para sa inyo po na mag-uumpisa ng inyong apartment business, ito po ang 10 things to do. Um, pwedeng yung iba na, na, na discuss ko na rin in previous videos, I'll just link them. Pero still, I'll touch on them a bit so that you'll have an idea of the things that you need to do. This will be a blueprint, a guide, which I wish we had in the beginning. No? So in 2016, nung nagpatayo kami ng sarili naming apartment, basta-basta na kami nagpatayo at wala kaming guide kagaya nito. So, napakaswer, not swear that I don't believe in luck. You're blessed to have this. And so, we're ready na kayo pag usapan na natin siya. 10 things. What's the first thing? The first thing you need to do is to buy land. Or if you have land already, that land should be fit for an apartment business. Now, hindi po pwede yung mga farmland of QC, yung mga land na malapit sa, ay malayo sa sentro. So, unfortunately, hindi po siya fit for an apartment. The land that's fit for an apartment is yung malapit sa lahat. Malapit sa transportation, malapit sa areas kung saan may trabaho, malapit sa palengke. Um, basically, strategic yung location. That's the best lot for an apartment. Now, if you want to know more details, we have a video on that and I'll just link it above or below so that you'll have more idea as to how to assess if your land is fit for an apartment. So, kapag check pasok ang inyong lupa sa isang apartment business, ang pangalawa po natin na kailangan gawin ay mag-research. This is very important. Just like what you're doing now, you're watching this video. This is part of your research process. So, kudos to you. This is time well spent. So, ano ba yung mga dapat yung i-research? Una sa lahat, i-research nyo na agad ay yung demand. Yun yung pinaka-importante. May demand ba for a rental property dun sa area ng lupa ko? Kung wala, ba't ka magtatayo ng apartment? For example, ang ganda ng lupa dito sa unahan namin. Pero since wala pang demand for an apartment, yung lupa na yun, hindi mo na namin tatayuan. Okay? So, kapag ka may demand, then good. Kung wala, then you either create the demand or wait until demand is there. Uh, sumunod na yung i-research yung design. Siyempre, kailangan yung design mo nagpa-follow sa National Building Code, yung setbacks and all. Pangalawa, para ma-maximize yung space. Pangatlo, para ma-maximize din yung budget mo. So, when you're thinking about the design, hindi mo lang iniisip yung yung ano ba yung design ng fasad niya, or design niya sa loob, and all that. Iniisip mo rin yung kapangkalahatan. Okay? At pangatlo, ang iyong i-research ay yung contractor. Now, if you're hiring a contractor, I, as, as a wife of an engineer and as a contractor ourselves, I highly suggest that you hire a contractor, a licensed civil engineer to build the job, no? to build your dream apartment for you. Why? Because you are investing in a business that has to be of quality. I would suggest that you hire a licensed civil engineer, hindi lang yung yung lisensyado lang, but yung meron talagang alam. At yung contractor na yun, hindi nyo lang titingnan yung portfolio nila. Titingnan nyo rin yung gawa nila. Now, why is this important? You ask the contractor to give you it, to refer you to his previous clients, or at least mapuntahan nyo yung mga gawa niya dati, mabisita nyo kung kamusta ba yung naging previous projects niya, malaman nyo rin kung on time din ba nag-deliver, nag malaman nyo rin kung nagkaroon ba ng issues within the six months or after a year, 
nagka-problema ba sa sink? Nagka kasi yun yung naging problema namin eh. Yung sink, yung bubong. So, medyo mar may issues kami doon. So, it's really important for you to screen your contractor. Huwag kayo basta-basta mag-hire just because maganda yung picture ng kanilang gawa. You have to physically see the property and talk to the previous clients. So, if you're not able to do that because you're abroad, then ask a family member to do it for you. Now, kailangan mar marunong din yung mag-visit, no? Baka maya pagkakita niya may dumilang ano niya na. Ang issues po ay, syempre, kung straight ba, <laughs> kung nasa hulog ba, yan yung mga titingnan. So, I hope that that person knows what he's doing. Uh, if you need a uh, more detailed video on that, I, we can do that. Okay. Um, pangatlo. This is very, very important. The th third thing that you need to do is to be financially prepared. Having an apartment business or starting an apartment business is a big deal and you will need a huge sum of money for this. Now, kami po, when we built our apartment, we have a video on that as well, kung paano namin finance, no? Kasi kapag kukuha po kayo ng contractor, meron niyang standard na 30% deposit. Siyempre, kasi kailangan niya mag-umpisa. Kailangan meron siyang pondo para mapaumpisahan yung project. And then, uh, nagbibil na lang po yan based on accomplishment. So, kami po as naging, kasi na, naranasan namin maging client at naranasan din namin maging contractor. Nung client kami, nakaredy lang po yung pera namin. Every time magbibil yung, client, yung contractor, nagbabayad kami. Kayo po bilang kliyente, para fair. Sorry, I have to say this. Para fair. Kailangan handa yung pera nyo kasi magpapagawa kayo. Kasi yung speed ng accomplishment ng project nyo will depend on, of course, yung ano nyo rin, yung kung updated din ba kayo magbayad. And kung wala naman siyang na-accomplish dun sa contractor part, no? kung wala naman siyang na-accomplish, huwag kayo magbabayad. So ano lang yun, both ways lang yun. So make sure you have the ready money and then make sure na nakaka-accomplish din siya bago kayo magbayad. Okay po? Para clear, make sure uh, that meron din kayong personal emergency fund when you are building your apartment. Bakit? Hindi po pwede na pagka nagkaroon ng emergency sa family, yung nakatabi niyong pera para sa iyong project ay magagalaw niyo dahil may emergency kayo sa family. So, kailangan may nakaset aside kayong personal emergency fund. Hiwala yung fund na pang project. Hiwala din yung fund for personal use. Okay po? That's very, very important. Pang-apat, the fourth thing that you need to do is to hire a consultant. Since you're abroad, so most of you are abroad, no? You're abroad and your project is in the Philippines. I suggest and I recommend that you hire a consultant to check the progress for you. Now, this can be an engineer, a QAQC engineer. My husband is a QAQC engineer. Actually, yung husband ko, nanggaling na siya sa contractor side, nanggaling na rin siya sa consultant side. So, nakapagtrabaho siya sa parehas na, na part sides. No? So, alam niya kung paano mag-shortcut yung mga contractor. Alam niya rin kung paano ipasa yung mga, uh, ano man tawag dito? Uh, non-compliance. Ano yung BIX? NCR. Non-compliance report. Something like that. So, nakita niya, nakuha niya na yung both sides. So, it's important that, especially if your family does not know anything about construction, you can hire an engineer to do the job for you. Hindi naman kailangan na the whole time andun siya, no? So, basically, he or she will serve or act as your eyes and ears. So, pwede siyang mag-visit during the important milestones, no? During, during the layout process, during the, ano ba ba, pagbuhos ng mga poste, pagbuhos sa, sa slab, and all that, yun, paggawa ng mga bubong. So, ito po ay third party uh, individual who will represent you to make sure that your contractor is doing his job properly. So, it's an added expense, but if tiwalang-tiwala na kayo sa contractor nyo, magaling talaga sila and nagbibigay talaga sila sa iyo ng update at maganda talaga yung gawa nila, then you don't need to hire a consultant. This is an option. Isa pa sa gagawin ng consultant na i-hire mo ay magsasnagging before turnover. Snagging is 
doing a proper checking of the entire building before turnover. So, kung mayroong mga bagay na kailangan repair, for example, uh, mga na, nasira or naghiwalay na plaster, yan, pwede nilang i- Ipas, isa snagging, pwede nilang ipaulit yun sa contractor before turnover. So, that's very, very important. Now, the fifth thing that you need to do once natapos na yun is dun sa turnover, na turnover na sa inyo yung project, no? Once na turnover na sa inyo yung building, live there for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> Bakit? Kasi you need to get a feel of the the, the, the place, no? So, nung na-turnover na po sa amin yung aming apartment, sakto na yung family ko umuwi from the Man Malaysia. So, anong nangyari is, pinatira ko sila doon and then sinabi nila na doon daw sa baba, medyo, doon daw sa taas, medyo mainit, maaraw. So, dahil dyan, nagpaglagay kami ng canopy. So, kung ano yung needs, sila yung, kumbaga, ay i-review -re nila yung lugar according to how it benefits them as a user. So, kung kanina, ang titingnan mo, yung consultant will review or will check according to how it's built, ito naman, ang mag, kaya mo siya titirahan is para ma-check mo how you are going to use it. Kung baga, ano, paano mo siya, paano ka kakakomportable, gaano ka kakakomportable sa loob. So, nalaman ko rin na mas maganda kung may aircon, so, pin-aircon na namin lahat. Yun. So, basically, live there for a few days para ma-check mo rin kung kamusta yung tubig, yung sink ba nag-work, and all those things. Okay? Yung banyo ba, bumababa ba yung tubig? So, bago pa magkaroon ng problema, kapag may tenant ka na, nasubukan mo na siya. So, syempre, bago mo i-turn over sa tenant, kailangan make sure na alam mo na okay siya. Pang-anim, sixth is apply for the necessary permits. of Obviously, yung occupancy permit, this has to be done by your contractor and then obviously you need to apply for a mayor's permit and all i already have a video on that and i'll just link it above or below why is it important to have a mayor's permit because it's always best to operate legally you wouldn't want to be caught on the other side you know yung ma ma penalize ka. you wouldn't want that to happen to you and of course ako, I, I go for doing things the right way number seven Seven is, even if you're still in the process of applying for a mayor's permit and all those things, you can already start promoting. Promote, promote, promote. Now, join FB groups uh, in your area. Join as many groups as you can and then promote it among your friends. Re ask friends for referrals. And then, uh, kapag ka merong areas na, for example, katabi siya ng Banco Central, then tell people that you have an apartment close by. Meron na rin po tayong video on how to promote your apartment business, yung kung paano ba mag-picture and all that. Kompleto po yun. I'll just link it in the description box below. Number eight. Okay, so nakapag-promote ka na. Ngayon, meron nang nag inquire Pag may nag-inquire na po, start na rin ang iyong screening process. Now, you screen tenants because you wouldn't want to have tenants who are problematic. Ano ba yung mga problema? Yung hindi nagbabayad on time, yung medyo magulo, yung medyo madumi, medyo problematic talaga, no? pasaway, no? So, we have a video on screening your tenants. It's important that you screen them so that you'll have peace of mind. Number nine, the ninth thing that you need to do is as you turn over the apartment, you need to make sure that you do a turnover inspection. So, ikaw at saka yung tenant, dalawa kayo, i-inspect nyo yung apartment para makuha niya yung apartment sa uh, na sure kayo na maganda yung apartment nung nakuha niya ito. So take note kung may mga sirang doorknob, usually wala naman ano bagong-bago ito pag tinuturn over, no? So lahat 'yun naka-indicate, pipirma siya, pipirma ka. And obviously we have a video on this, so I'll just link it down below. And the 10th thing that you need to do is to once nakapag-move in na yung iyong tenant, you need to monitor don't just let the business run itself. Although passive income naman talaga ang apartment business, you need to monitor. Monitor your income, monitor your outgoings, monitor the electricity bills, monitor the things that you spend, additional things, monitor your taxes, monitor everything. And as you monitor, also pray for your business. Pray for your tenants. It's very, very important and entrust the whole business. To the Lord. I believe that we're all stewards 
and all these things are just entrusted to us. So if we surrender our business to the Lord, I know and I believe that the Lord will bless and prosper our business. So those are the 10 things that you need to do as you start your apartment business. Now, comment down below. Asang stage na kayo? Kon- paghahanap pa lang ba ng contractor? Kung paghahanap na pa lang ng contractor, anong problema na hahanap nyo? Uh, building stage na ba? Mayor's permit application na ba? Screening tenants na ba? Hanap pa lang ng lupa. Sa 10 steps na yon, 10 things that you need to do, asa na kayo? Comment down below and let's have a uh, fruitful conversation and answer your questions. So, I hope that you found this helpful. Please click the like button if you did and subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you very much for spending time with me. I'll see you in the next video.